Hi there, thanks for joining us. This is Let's Talk, the web, the video cast edition from Planners Web. I'm Della Rucker with the Wise Economy Workshop, and I have the great opportunity today to speak with Jean Danielle Cousin, who is the Managing Director and Chief Solutions Architect for eDeliberation.com Incorporated, which is a firm out of Vancouver that is doing great work in not just allowing us to get feedback to do what I call telling in some of the things that I've written for Planners Web, but to really start the process of dialogue and collaboration, something that we don't always think of online tools as being able to use, to being able to do, rather. So I'm delighted to be able to introduce you to Jean Danielle and eDeliberation.com today. So Jean Danielle, how you doing? Hi, Della. It's a real pleasure to be here. I'm doing very, very well. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Now, I know a little bit of your story, but not a ton of it. So why don't you give us a little bit of an understanding of how you got into this business, what you were interested in, or, or what your involvement was prior to starting eDeliberation, and kind of what you were responding to when you started that company. Sure. Uh, I had a, a successful career in management uh, and then as a business consultant for, for many years, uh, working with companies to implement uh, enterprise systems and uh, do operational re-engineering and things like that. So I spent quite a bit of time in, in meetings and in conferences uh, where the goal was to solve a problem or to, to come to some strategy or things like that. And I noticed how ineffective those meetings were typically. Uh, some of them might be introverts and not be able to to push their ideas forwards, but they have great ideas that just remain silent. A lot of ideas get lost, uh, and the solution uh, development ends up being single-threaded, whereas a lot of the problems that we're dealing with today are a lot more complex than a single thread of solution. The problem space is complex, and the solutions get able to absorb that complexity to be eff effective. So why don't you show us a little bit of how eDelib works, or I'm sorry, eDeliberation works. I have a tendency to shorten all these things anymore. <laughs> so. For sure. I'll, I'll share my, uh, my screen here. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention to this line here, uh, right under the, 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 the picture, where, which, is a, uh, which are links to answer some of the questions. And we'll be spending quite a bit of time at looking at the, the third one here, how it works. I'm going to skip directly to uh, this page here, uh, which is a description of or an illustration of the eLiberation process. Um, the first step is to propose a, an event, which is basically putting, uh, stating what is the, the nature of the, the problem you're trying to resolve. Um, this is the event that we'll be looking at during this, uh, the, this presentation. It's, a, it's an event about food security for a given community. So in this case, the idea was to bring the community to get together to work with the local government in terms of coming up with uh, food security strategies that might be, that would work for this community. So this whole idea of the food security was to maximize the, the, the local production and to minimize the need for import. The question is, how do you do that? And this event, is to put together a strategy to enable that. Various modules or these various phases each have va valuable deliverables that can be combined uh, to create um, the outcomes that, that you're looking for based on your needs. So if it's just feedback or if all you're trying to do is determine priorities um, and you want to do this very quickly, you can use the expedited pr priorities um, variant of the process. If, if you don't have time to do a full elaboration, you can do a mini one, uh, one that goes quite far, but doesn't go the whole distance. Um, so it's a question of, of budget, a question of time, and, and what are the outcomes you're looking for. The, the first step in the process is uh, a brainstorm. It's called perspectives. And in this step, what we're trying to do is to get the perspectives of all the stakeholders that have been assembled around this virtual uh, meeting room. The, the, uh, and I'll show you what this looks like. So the, the perspectives is basically people showing up at, at, 
at, at the right time. And here I'll, I'll show you, for example, the event schedule. So in, in this uh, case here, what we're trying to do is get people to provide their perspectives around food security. Uh, the, the focus of the event is to determine a practical strategy to ensure the food security of the community. It's, it's shown right up here. And people have already brainstormed a number of, of ideas. Um, these are perspectives. These are ideas that could be could, that could solve that that, that the, the individuals can believe could solve the the problem. They could be concerns or or fears, or they could be um, constraints that people have to live with, or it could be their hopes about the future. Basically, we're creating a backdrop that will serve us going forward as a reality check in terms of what is the nature of the problem we're, tr we're trying to solve and what are the attributes that people would like to see in this, in this solution. This creates a backdrop for the next phase. And the next phase is the topic jostle. I have to say, I particularly like this idea. The, the topic well, jostle is a neat way to, to handle this. So go ahead. Yeah. So, well, the topic jostle, instead of coming up with a predefined agenda of things that we will discuss around uh, food security, the idea is to ask the people who you know come from these various backgrounds, what are the topics that we should be talking about when we talk about food security? So we're, we're going to be starting to converge here towards possible solution orientations. So I'm going to bring you to the, um, to the topic, to the topic jostle screen. <clears throat> so what we've done here is we've gone from perspectives to topic jostle and using our calendar here, this would actually have been triggered automatically. And at this point, what we're trying to do is ask people to uh, come up with orientations of solution. What could be ways in which we can ensure our food security uh, in this community? And these, these uh, topics that have been uh, brainstormed might be inspired by the, uh, the perspectives, but they, they, they might be completely new ideas. They might not, not have come up in the perspectives, but at least they're being informed by the various perspectives that were brainstormed earlier. Uh, so somebody who's got an idea um, will already start being uh, influenced by the the ideas that the rest of the community in in deliberation has has brought forward. Very attractive proposals or attractive uh, uh, proposals that people have I believe have a lot of traction will be endorsed. The, the concept of endorsement is where we we tell people here in the instructions to propose new uh, topics and then to endorse the topics that they believe have a lot of potential. So topics that have a lot of endorsements, like the top one here has six endorsements, whereas uh, the third one here only has two. The next phase is going to ask us to, um, actually I'll, I'll go back to my diagram here, is a, is a topics poll. And the topics poll is to ask the participants to identify amongst all the topics that are sufficiently endorsed, and in this case here, that have five endorsements or more, uh, to, to, to indicate which of all these topics that have been endorsed are the ones that they believe individually uh, ought to go forward and be deliberated on. So, so basically the number of endorsements becomes the shortlist for which of all of the various things that have been proposed moves forward to this next phase, but then you still have to go through and do priority setting. And yes. the five, to be clear, the five is was an arbitrary, that was the selection that was made for this project. That's not set in stone. Now, you might, at this point, uh, if, if all you wanted to do was to come up with your short list of priorities, we'd be done. Because at the end of this poll, uh, you, you'd, you'd see, uh, you'll see the, the, uh, the, the list of these topics and what were the preferences uh, of all of all the, the 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 participants in terms of which ones are the the ones that need to be prioritized? And if you need to choose choose a, the the top three, well, that you'll have the results. In this case, we're going to go further, but you already have a deliverable here that's interesting. Then, as we go forward, so this is the. Uh, 
I, I, I've now moved to the, the event to the next phase, which is the, uh, the assignment poll. And the, the purpose of this poll is to identify for each participant which of these topics that, that were, that were uh, shortlisted, the nine topics that were shortlisted, which one do you want to work on? Because we'll be, as we move forward into the deliberation process, we'll be assigning people to sub-teams, and each sub-team will work on one of these topics. So at this point, when everybody has filled out their, their, this poll here, we know uh, on which teams participants want to uh, be assigned. Uh, and, and there's an algorithm that does the ass assignation. Um, and this algorithm looks at what preferences people made, but also uh, has another, another aspect, which so that as the teams it constituted, it makes sure that there's, the membership is balanced in the sense that every team has a team member that, is, that belongs or has close contact with each of the other each of the other teams. It's to create a, a structure that is as balanced as possible. Because as we move forward into the deliberation waves, uh, this the structure will be important to make sure that feedback happens to every team about what's being said in other teams that is important or relevant to this team's work. The next phase is the uh, is the inclusion uh, phase. And this phase happens while the assignations are being figured out. And the, the purpose of this phase is to ask people, OK, we had all those perspectives. We also had a number of topics that were not prioritized. Uh, we've had to drop some of these ideas along the way to be able to focus on the critical nine. Were there some really important ideas in the ones in the in in the topics and or in perspectives that we we've we've uh, gone beyond that are really important that we should include in the deliberation of these these nine topics here? Are there any ideas that we need to bring forward? And and uh, so, so the the idea here is uh, people have like a twenty four hour period to to look at these various topics and and make suggestions review the perspectives, review the, uh, the topics that were, um, that, that were not prioritized, and make suggestions here. Now, these suggestions will be taken by the, each of the sub-teams that are currently being formed around each of these topics will be taken as an input to allow them to um, enrich that topic to, to, to include the, these ideas that otherwise might be lost. The importance of doing this is to make sure that uh, the, the outcome of this uh, e-deliberation event has relevance and that we haven't forgotten a, like a, an elephant in the room. <laughs> we haven't forgotten something that's really important that for some reason didn't make it as a, as a topic all by itself. And basically what we're trying to do here is to flesh out a strategy um, that's going to be multifaceted, and each of these facets is one of the topics that we've prioritized. But it's not just multifaceted, it's also an integrated strategy in the sense that uh, each of these topics are, is going to generate an outcome, or a, a proposed outcome resolve, we call that. It's, uh, it's what each of the team believes we should do about the topic that they've been assigned to, to resolve the focus of this e-deliberation. So each of these topics has to work together with all the other topics in terms of how it gets resolved. And this is what we do here in, in, in up to three waves. Now, there's some variants of the process that, that can be done where you only do one wave, um, two waves, or the full process being three waves. Each of those waves is, is very similar um, in a sense that uh, people are assigned to uh, various topic teams, and, and they work within these teams to uh, come up with an outcome resolve. And at the end of a certain amount of time, there's a feedback poll that we'll look at in, in a moment. Wave. We have R. Davis here, who is assigned to four topic teams. Uh, two of them, he's assigned as a deliberator. So he's one of five deliberators on this topic team, and the deliberators are responsible 
to generate uh, the outcome resolve for their team. He's also assigned as a guardian in two other topic teams. And as a guardian, his job isn't to, to drive a conclusion, but it's more to give feedback to the deliberators about two things. One of, one of these things is how that team is doing. For example, if, if uh, you have a deliberator that gets really um, pushy or dominant, he might get feedback from guardians saying, uh, maybe I'd like to hear from the other people. <laughs> Uh, or he, he might give feedback to the deliberator about um, other ways to approach a problem situation, for example. Um, the guardian is also his, the second aspect of the guardian job description is to bring feedback uh, from the teams that he's, uh, that he's involved with. Um, for example, the guardian, uh, Davis here is, is a guardian on the Brown team. So when he comes to Brown team, He's also participant in the pink, black, and blue. So he can talk about what the, the, these three other teams are, are saying that is relevant to the discussion uh, that's happening in the brown team. It's a way to make the information flow. There might be something that's said in the blue team that is really, really important, and that hinges on something that's being said in the brown team. And in that case, uh, Davis's role is to, to bring this information forward so that there's transparency and, and, and wisdom is, is, or not, oh, let me call this reverberation of ideas, uh, can actually flow through the whole process. And that's, so, a, and that's a really excellent um, element of this because one of the things that we often miss in when we go through these kind of processes in a linear manner is that we'll sort of kind of remember that something happened back over when we were talking about that other issue, but it, it kind of gets, gets lost along the way. Whereas what you're doing here through this subtopic, through this sort of sub-working group approach with the guardians and the deliberators, is you're actually forcing the connections between the different issues as you go along. Exactly. Exactly. So from here, the uh, Davis, this is his homepage for, for this event. He can navigate to each of the, his four different teams and we'll just uh, move to one of them. Uh, we're on the blue team. And what we have here is a, uh, a page that has actually quite a bit of content. Uh, this is a, the, the topic of this team. Um, and here's uh, what had been filled in in terms of uh, you know, what this team is about. And, and the, that, this is the original topic. And we already have a working outcome resolve. Now, this team has to deliver an outcome resolve for this topic here in terms of how this topic will address the focus. And, and they've already created um, a document or a text around that. This text could include pictures, include, including, could include references to videos, hyperlinks, what have you. And there's also access to uh, revisions. So as this document evolves, they can access uh, prior revisions uh, just to make sure that, uh, you know, when it gets edited, um, that there's no loss of continuity. And what I mean here is if somebody goes in there and really make, makes, makes a mess of things, they can bring it back. <laughs> it's a bit like the concept of a wiki. So at the end of this phase, uh, we've got an outcome resolve. The next, the next step is to uh, present us back to the full, to the full group. We call we talk this. Uh, we're, we call this a plenary free, free uh, plenary feedback poll. I'm sorry. Uh, and the idea here is to ask each participant. Uh, in this case, here all 22 of them, to look at each of the outcome resolves for each of the teams, and to uh, give their feedback. In fact, we're asking them to give their consent consent and feedback. What consent means here is they, 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 uh, they have no paramount objection to this outcome resolve. There's no objection that they can invoke that would stop them from being able to do their job or that would uh, be otherwise paramount to, to, to who and what they are. Uh, so what we're trying to get at here is uh, 
can can these outcome resolves fly, or are there some some really big weaknesses that need to be resolved? So the the topic team is to come up with a outcome resolve for their topic that garners a hundred percent consent from all the participants. So the participant isn't just working for his self-interest or for the self-interest of the group he's representing or what have you, or a stakeholder. He's working to make sure that his team comes up with something that flies, that, that gets consent of the whole group. Otherwise, we don't have closure. Otherwise, we've wasted our time because we want a strategy that, that is integrated and that has the consent of the full group. We have three waves in which to resolve these, these objections. And at the end, if, if, um, if we can't resolve an objection, uh, the group, the, 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 um, the, 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 the topic teams will list the objection as a, minor, as a minority report under their outcome resolve so that if the objections are heard um, it will be indicative that they tried to manage it, they tried to, to include it, but they were not able to. So in the final report, the objection is also listed. Um, so that's the, 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 whole, the whole process here. Now I'm not going to go through waves two and three because they're identical to waves to wave one and to wave one poll. Um, at, at the final, at the final um, wave, it, be it a, if this is a one-wave event or a two-wave event, that final wave, uh, the group has a, a final review that allows them to do the to do any touch-ups and then, and then uh, we're at the point where we have the uh, final report that can be generated because the event is closed, is, is completed, and this final report uh, basically summarizes um, everything that happened uh, on the um, uh, during the event and it becomes the report that's delivered to the sponsors or to the decision makers, whoever the target of the event was for. The report is apparently automatically generated from the content that's been put into the process to date. Correct. So that's a quick overview of the whole process. Great. Great. Thank you.